Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and you asked for it, so here it is. Take a look at this svelte little number. the request of one of you i had this sent to me by bu blasters link in the description of course uh for review we have the unicorn now i had seen this in pictures and i think i'd even seen one in person already and it, it hadn't jumped out at me i didn't like the aesthetics of the front end here i thought it was a little bit a little bit goofy looking but um it's starting to grow on me and i think by the end of this video you will probably understand why now, uh, before we get into things like the features and the testing and, uh, and uh, even a potential upgrade, uh, we're gonna, we have a testimonial. I, I got this right before I went to our first ever competitive event, and I handed it off to somebody to give it a test. So let's go to the field and see how that went. This is Crewman Rocket. Crewman Rocket is going to be running the unicorn for this round of our com first ever competitive game here in the Northwest. We'll see how well it do. I will, I will get your opinion of it after you're dead. Off you go. All right, well, it took you to victory with a clutch win at the end, but what are your thoughts on it in general? So overall, it, it, I mean, it shot darts. That's the first important thing. But I'm kind of getting a bit, a bit of mix of, like, some are going plenty far downrange, and then some are spitting, like, 20, 30 feet, and then just dropping. Um, Interesting. The darts aren't, like, super squished. And so, it's all the same ammo. It's all the same. All right, so the head, I mean, some inconsistency out of the box. Good to know. This has not been upgraded at all, and I did at one point pull the barrel out. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll take it to the range and take it to the shop and get some more. But it didn't let you down in the end, so that's it, something. Didn't it? Didn't shoot lasers or anything, <laughs> but uh, any. All right. Actually, it can hit someone. Nice and compact for this style of game. That's true. It is nice and compact. Cool, cool. And easy to run around. Cool, with. cool, cool, cool. All right. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. Run for it. So inconsistency. The biggest issue he had was inconsistency, and that is a serious problem in a competitive game, obviously. Uh, you cannot afford to have your blaster not be reliable in a competitive setting. So we're going to see if that is something that was, had to do with the ammo, or if it's an inherent flaw to the blaster itself. If we can find an ammo type that works really well, that might that might be the solution because this thing came with a really weird ammo type now i don't know how these are going to show up but they are obviously their suction cup which is an odd choice but then they're made from the closed cell foam that ultra darts are made out of but they are bamboo style so one could uh, infer that that means this thing is intended for use or is optimized for use with bamboo style darts. So that is one thing we will test. We will test it with the darts it came with. We'll test it with some other bamboo uh, closed cell foam darts. We will test it with the uh, Dart Zone Pro darts. And of course we will do a control test where we use regular uh, non-bamboo darts. Uh, and we'll see if we also see inconsistencies. Um, and then, then we will try upgrading it. And I think finally we'll talk some of the more interesting features for those of you that are interested in features. So let's take it to the chronograph and put some darts through it. Right, we're here. I've got my good chronograph back. It turns out the problem wasn't actually with my chronograph, it was with my lighting kit had gone bad. So I got a new lighting kit. Anyway, we're starting out with the uh, weird styrofoam suction cup bamboo darts that it came with. We'll see what kind of numbers we're getting with the stock spring. And I'm going to go ahead and extend that stock. And it doesn't seem to have read it. Ah, it did. 192, 194, 188. 184 again. 192 again. So with those, the darts it come with, it works quite well. They are probably very light. Let's try a different kind of the same foam, but with different heads. So we've got uh, same body type, different head. These have more of a dart zone, standard dart zone, half dart style of head. 
We've actually extended the stock properly this time. Let's see what these get. 195, 190, 192, 191, 192. So very consistent with those darts, which again, it's the darts it comes with, you would expect it, but those aren't the standard for our hobby. So let's take a look at some darts that are more standardized within our hobby. In fact, we'll use the stuff that was used in the video. Right, we're now gonna try some Dart Zone Max darts, which is what uh, Crewman Rocket was using in the video. 165, 142, 154, 134, 173. And in previous tests, I've had it go as low as one or 86. So with full with those particular darts, we're seeing a lot more variation. You know, 40 FPS difference, uh, all the way down to 100 FPS difference sometimes. Um, so yeah, let's let's try another standard uh, full or half dart. Right, so now we've got the uh, Worker Gen 3 Plus, I think they're called, the red Gen 3s. We'll see what this gets us. 143, 145, 136, 139, 145. So a little more consistent, but consistently lower. Let's try something bambooed. Right, so this are these are worker Gen threes again, but I don't know if you can tell from the from that, but they have been bambooed. There's a jig you can get that allows you to bamboo non bambooed darts. Let's see if this makes a difference. One fifty three, one sixty nine, one seventy six, one sixty two, one fifty nine. I can't count. So. Still a little bit more consistent and a little bit higher. We're still not getting into the the 190s like we were with the, uh, the the styrofoam style darts. But again, I think those are lighter. We got one more. We're gonna try the uh, the fancy bamboo darts. Right. We now have the uh, the newest from the Dart Zone Pro line, the uh, red and green. We'll see how these work. 174. 172, 176, 175, 173. Very consistent, and we're up into the 170s now. We're still getting the 190s, but again, I think that's probably the weight of the darts. I could, I could test and see if they are that much lighter, but uh, that is fascinating. So it definitely likes, seems to like, the Dart Zone Pro bamboo darts. Luckily, those, while not available in stores, are readily available online. Uh, I've I've managed to acquire quite a few of them. All right, let's, uh, let's go to the range and plink. I want a plink. Here on the range, uh, we've got the stock darts again, and we're gonna see how well they actually fly. We got lots of power out of them. Whew. Oh, they fly. <laughs> they fly pretty nice. Round's complete. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed. I was not expecting him to fly that good, especially without any rifling and such a short barrel. Fascinating. Let's try the other one. More styrofoam darts, but now with a different head. Try it up close first. Oh, dead center. 50. Yep, 50. Yep, 50. Yep. Okay, okay, they're good, I'll give them that. Now if I could get them by the thousand, that would matter, but since I can't, because I don't think I can, anybody know where I can get those darts in bulk? They're in my colors. We're gonna go from that to one that uh, probably will not perform so well, but I'm, uh, I'm curious. Well, that one was okay, 50. I still can't count. But that seemed to work pretty good. Maybe it just needed to get broken in. He was the first person to ever put darts through it. Let's try another type. Burger Gen 3s. Let's try 
Oh, that one didn't sound good. Oh. Still can't count. And I, I didn't hit the 50. That may be me, but, uh, nah. Let's try the bamboos, the, the custom bamboos. All right, homemade bamboos. See how they do. See if I can count this done. One, two, three, four. Ah, interesting. Not as accurate. Again, it could still be me. Last but not least, the uh, Dart Zone Pro bamboos. There we go. Still can't count. Anyway, those ones, those ones flew nice and straight, so. Those will probably be what I stick with for a lot of the future of this video. Let's go talk features and then upgrades. So let's talk features. What all comes in the box? Well, you have the blaster, of course, and uh, it does have some interesting options that you can change about depending on your preference. So we'll start with the back. We've got a stock. It is an adjustable stock. It does lock into longer positions. The full position is actually quite comfortable, even for somebody, for an adult. Uh, if you've got longer arms, it might be a little short for you, but uh, if you've got shorter arms, there are shorter features. It doesn't lock at the cl closed position. It just can't quite reach that locking lug, though you could probably grind it or file it so that it would if you really wanted it to lock there. It's up to you. Um, the mag release is right here above the trigger, which if you're wielding it right-handed is convenient to hit with your trigger finger. If you're left-handed, it's less convenient, but you can get it with your thumb. Though I keep clipping the point right here with the bottom of my thumb whenever I do that. I don't know why they did that. The mag release is such is a design that it absolutely could have and should have had a thumb release down here, but that's just not what they decided to do. Um, so it's not the least ambidextrous design, but it's not the worst. There is a safety on the right side. Again, convenient to access if you're right-handed, but also easy to accidentally bump if you're right-handed. Though bumping it up unlocks it, so it's not really that much of an issue. You can get it with your left hand. You just have to work at it a little bit more. Um, it does have multiple priming options. So the usual configuration that you're probably gonna see is gonna be the pump action here, which as you can see, extends out farther than the barrel so that you don't hit your hand when you prime it, which I appreciate. You cannot deprime, but it does have a decent seal. Um, and that's held on with hex nuts, which they do provide you the tools. It comes with two Allen wrenches for the two different sizes that you see in the blaster. So that is very nice that they give you the tools that you need to adjust it. And it comes with extra screws and stuff should you lose them or strip them out. Um, under there is just Picatinny rail, so you could put a different foregrip, though if you go with one that's straight up and down, you're probably gonna be slamming the back of the hand into the magwell. So you're probably gonna need one that's at least vaguely like this. There's not a lot of Picatinny rail under there, so that's going to limit what items you can put on there, and frankly, um, this one's growing on me. Now, the other option is underneath this rail, this top rail, and I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be able to fully demonstrate this because I set it up for this configuration and I don't know how easy it is to switch back. We're going to find out. But you can take that off. And then if you remove this plate, and I'm not sure what the easiest way to do that would be. I wonder if I thread a screw in here, if I can then pull it up. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so if you take that plate off, you can then see the priming bar there. And this section of Picatinny rail screws onto that priming bar and then has... Um, a nut that goes here to provide stability. Now we have some Picatinny rail that is attached to the priming bar, so it moves with the priming bar, or if you were to say attach a grip up there, now you have a top prime blaster.
fascinating. For folks who like top prime blasters, I guess, it's not my preference, so I will keep it with the other configuration, but that's a thing that you can do. Pretty neat. And if you don't want to use this for here, now you have a perfectly good angled foregrip you can use on something else. So I'm going to swap it back and we will continue talking features. Incidentally, it comes with a bag of replacement O-rings, which is just incredibly thoughtful of them. Uh, also, those look like the uh, inserts for the uh, sights, which I should install. Little green dots. Yay. Right, the final gizmo that was in the box was this, which is another stock option. It goes into the grip here, has a locking lug that comes in from the other side. We can now get rid of this because we now have a standard end strike attachment point, inverted. So you can put any end strike stock on it upside down, and it's uh, really quite comfortable. Um, it's not quite as solid because end strike stocks don't, you know, are, are a little wobblish. But uh, if this is your preferred style of stock, this is another option. And it would give you more adjustable stocks or stocks that hold magazines, whatever you want. You have, you have various options there. Um, still quite comfortable. I find it kind of digs into the wrist a little bit, but not too bad. I do have large hands, so it might be less of an issue for you. It might be more of an issue. Yeah, I don't know. But now, now, now it gets a little, a little, a little silly. Show them the thing! I'm showing them the thing. Because uh, it's not just a standard end strike attachment point. There is also, I don't know how you can see it, thread. There is thread back there that allows you to thread in. Any standard pop bottle. Now the, the instructions recommend a two liter, but I didn't have any two liters. I just had uh, an A&W bottle, but uh, now you've got a pop bottle stock. What? 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 I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyway, that just pops right back out of there. That can come back off. I prefer the standard stock, so I'm going to go with the standard stock, though at some point I will obviously need to run it with a two-liter root beer bottle, or possibly a small root beer bottle, for the lols and the memes. All right, let's talk mags. It does, in fact, take Talon magazines, which, if that weren't the case, I probably wouldn't be bothering with this blaster at all. But it will, in fact, take standard Talon mags. It will take the Ezekiel drum mag with a little bit of uh, force. It will take katanas, though they they don't lock in quite as well. This one seems to now be working well, but it doesn't want to work with Coda mags. And I don't know. Oh, there! I finally got it to catch. Just needed some some violence. If you slam it in there, now it'll catch. Uh, I'm not sure what's up with that, but it'll catch. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Probably figure out where it's actually hitting that's preventing it from going in smoothly. Oh, if you just force it in. Yeah, anyway. Um, Kodamags will, will eventually work with it with some violence and possibly a little modification. Let's talk construction. This is an incredibly well-constructed blaster. It is solid. There is no wobblishness. There is no creaking. Uh, it's very comfortable, and it's made from a very solid, dense, thick plastic. It doesn't feel brittle. It feels like you could throw this thing about. Most of the uh, hardware parts, all these orange parts, are in fact metal. They are painted metal, and that is just... It makes it heavy for its size, but not heavier than larger blasters. So um, I really like how sturdy it is and the fact that there's so much metal involved. It almost feels like Delrin or something. It's a really, really solid plastic, which is really, really cool. Train! Right, now for the bit that I'm sure many of you have only stayed around or skipped ahead even to get to. How easy is it to mod and can it be modded? Well, it is in fact extremely easy to mod. Pull those two pins 
and there's your main spring. That's, that's about as easy as it gets. There's your plunger tube. There's anything you need to get your hands on. All of it's right in there. Very simple. And uh, well, there's our spring. And I, I know we all know what the next question is. Can it take a K26? Well, I don't know. Where would I even get some of it? Well, that'll work. So we have a bit of K26 here. This is four and a half inches. About 13 coils, and I just sliced myself. Be careful. The, uh, the inside edge of that is really sharp. Pardon me while I grab a file. I bled for this review. Anyway, as it happens, K26 fits on this spring post perfectly. This is four and a half inches or about 13 coils. And uh, there it is. It can, in fact, take a K26. Let's go get some new numbers after I get some first aid. Right, so I've got three kinds of darts loaded up in here. I've got first the, uh, the styrofoam darts, then max darts, then darts on pro. So let's see what we get for numbers on K26. 215, 214, 210, 212, 217. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Okay, let's see on those. Max darts, 183, 171, 191, 185, 173. So we're finally hitting that 190, but again, we've got a 20 FPS variance. Not great. Let's take a look at the, that ought to help, uh, the darts on pro. 188, 190. 189, 190, 189. So, within two FPS of each other, all at 190. That will do. That will do. How much more could it take? I do not know. Um, the Prime is not particularly pleasant at that. It's not bad. But uh, I wouldn't want to go with much heavier of a spring load. Maybe a better spring if you could get, like, Pro 26. I think, is that what it's called? the good springs. Um, you might be able to get even better performance out of it, but uh, for something this compact, for this this tiny, to be getting darn near 200 with that simple of an upgrade, that's really impressive. What would a, you know, a longer barrel, would it do better? Um, how much would a scar barrel um, affect it? That is one feature I forgot to mention. It does have a protruding section of standard size barrel. So any of the various scar barrels, worker scar barrels, darts on pro scar barrels, actually I don't know about theirs, but worker scar barrels will definitely fit on that barrel and uh, might improve your accuracy, though I wasn't having much trouble with accuracy. So, yeah. I will definitely tinker with this more. I really like it. It's, I mean, for how, I mean, it's, it's just so compact, which is great for CQB and for uh, competitive games because you're hiding behind cover and being able to easily pop up. Uh, long arms kind of get in the way at that point. So pretty schnazzy. Let me know what you guys think of the Unicorn. If any of you have run one, uh, what your experience is with it, what uh, upgrades you've done to it. I'm, I'm really curious, but uh, I like it. Link will be in the description. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>